Guys, welcome to Better Bachelor. My name is Joker, and tonight we are going to be listening to a video by a woman dating coach, and she's quizzing men. Are you attractive? Are you sexually attractive to women? And how exciting. I've got my pen and paper. We're going to take the quiz together, and we're going to all find out just how much women desire us. And if we're in the top 1 or 10 or 20% of attractive men... Uh, spoiler alert. So first of all, I have nothing against this gal. Um, I'll go over her channel here in a minute. I have no hate for her. Um, you know, uh, again, I, I don't ever hate the uh, uh, players. I just hate the game. But she sells her dating advice. And I just naturally am never much on, hey, let me teach you how, and I'm going to charge you on how to date women. And and I, I especially don't necessarily think that's a good idea of listening to women. Now, many of, of the women's would say, hey, who would better, who would know better than I as to what we find attractive? Uh, the problem is I don't think she's, I don't think she's 100% accurate and, and on point as to what women find attractive. And you'll find this out in some of her, her, her pitches here. Uh, it's just kind of one of those, meh. Uh, as you notice, I'm not on the bus. I am in a, in a room in the house. The bus is going off to have my um, hitch, my class four hitch welded on it so I can tow my truck behind it. So it will be, uh, it'll, I'll probably be in here for another couple of weeks. And then I'm on the road and then I'm out of here and I'm heading north. I found some property in South Dakota, some in Wyoming, some in Montana that I want to go check out. Um, and so I, it's a little echoey in here. So I, I, I do apologize for the sound acoustics. It's going to sound just a little bit hot, but I've literally got a blanket hanging on the wall and a map behind me that is cloth. And I've done as much as I can to deaden it out. So you'll just have to be patient. Okay, so let's move on to our main attraction here. So uh, this gal is, uh, her channel's called, um, I don't even have my glasses on. Let me see. Is it Manny? Marnie. Marnie, your personal wing girl. Um, and she goes into her pitch about, uh, hey, here's here's a bunch of advice for you guys to find out, like, here's what women find attractive. Now, I'm not going to completely crap on her. Some of the, the things that she says do make sense for uh, average guys that are trying to do better when they're dating. These are many of the things I might tell you to do as well. The problem is she kind of throws out all the truths that we know, and she kind of nicely glazes it over. And and I think she does this because if she were to say this, a lot of guys would probably say, oh, I don't even have a chance at this and I'm not going to bother to watch her or I'm not going to bother even buying her material because again, she does sell her dating stuff and, and I'm, I'm pretty sure she wants customers. So she's going to, you know, I think she's going to tell a little bit of, about what people like to hear, but I'm giving her a fair shake because I've listened to the video and, and she does give some good advice. But I always say, you know what? You don't ask a fish how to catch other fish. You ask a fisherman. And for that, I would always advise, ask guys that are very successful in dating the best ways to date and pick up women and what they find works for them. Oh, it's really great on paper when a woman says, oh, I, I go for guys that make me laugh. And as long as he's got a good stable job, he doesn't have to be rich. And he doesn't have to be good looking as long as he goes to the gym a little bit. And then next Friday night, you see her out with Chad and he's six foot three and he's muscular and he pulls up in a Bugatti Veyron. And, and that's the guy that they end up dating. Meanwhile, the guy that looks like, um, uh, what's his name? C.K. Lewis. Uh, is that the comedian? C.K. Anyway, uh, Louis, Louis C.K. I got it backwards. And, he, and meanwhile, the guy that looks like Louis C.K., um, even though he may have a lot of money um, and he may be incredibly funny, Louis C.K. is not going out with exceptionally beautiful women. So let's, let's, I've got this at one and a half speed. So you're gonna, uh, you know, I'll, I'll repeat a little bit of it as, as we go, but it's about a 15 minute long video down to about 13 minutes after we take out her, her uh, sponsors. Uh, so let's listen through and, and I got my paper here. I'm going to take notes and we'll talk about this as we go. So here's Marnie, your wingman coach girl telling you guys how to pick up ladies or what ladies find most sexy in a guy. Ever wish you could just know what women think about you? More accurately, have you ever wanted to know how sexually attractive women think you are? Or 
if they even think you're sexy? Well, this video will answer those questions for you if you play along. It will help you figure out exactly how sexually attractive you are to women. So here's how it's gonna work. I'm gonna be asking you a wide range of very simple questions, yes or no questions. You'll listen to them carefully and answer as honestly as possible. Honesty is the key here, okay, so be honest. Or else your results would be inaccurate and this video will be of no real use to you in a total waste of your time. I don't want that. As you answer these questions, you'll take note of how many yeses you get. And I suggest you get a pad or open up the notes app in your phone. Depending on how many yeses you get, you'll be given a rating or a grade or whatever you wanna call it. There's going to be a total of 23 very simple, very direct questions. And if you get zero to five yeses, it means you're not sexy at all, sorry. If you get six to 10 yeses, it means you're slightly sexy. 11 to 15 yeses means you're pretty sexy. 16 to 20 yeses means you're super sexy. And finally, if you somehow get over 20 yeses, it means you're among the top 1% of sexy men in the world. Ooh, okay, top, top. One percent. Uh, we got to get over twenty. But if we're sixteen to twenty, fellas, we're super, super sexy, right? Let me fast forward through her plug of her book and her information and her um, sponsor for the video. It must be nice having sponsors. No one ever sponsors me except Aaron Clary because he knows I love his books and I love his work. All right, moving on here. Let's listen to all her top reasons. I'll pause it um, if like every couple, unless there's something I really want to talk about on each point. And I think there's tw like a 23 or something like that. Remember how you will be scored, but I will repeat it once again in the end, just in case you forget. Okay, enough said, I'm not gonna ramble on anymore. Here's the test. Question number one, do you have proper grooming and hygiene practices? Okay, proper grooming and hygiene. I have a freshly shaved head. I do brush my teeth and and make make sure I smell nice. So I'm going to give myself a point for that. Don't forget to play along, gentlemen. We, we we're all gonna we're all gonna maybe do okay here. Maybe we're gonna be top one percenters. The key word here is practices, as in something that you do regularly, not just when you're going out for a special occasion. Hygiene and grooming practices include things like regular showers, brushing your teeth properly, moisturizing your skin, shaving, manscaping, using cologne, so on and so forth. All manscaping, because you know. That's really important if you're a complete bachelor who hasn't gone on a date yet. Hey, fellas out there that are not, are, that are celibate, not by choice, make sure you manscape. That, that'll make all the difference in the world. All of these things are incredibly important to all women, and you need to have proper habitual practices for these. Okay, question number two. Do you put effort into dressing up properly? Okay, do you put dr uh, effort into dressing properly? I do. Not always, not always, but if I'm in the market and I'm actually interested in, in looking good and I'm, I'm hoping to meet somebody, I do have some very nice looking clothes, although I never much wear them because I don't really care. But we'll let her say her spiel here. So many guys just put on whatever they can find. And this costs them heavily with women. I'm not saying it's a be all and end all, but it costs them. Look, we care a lot about how you present yourself to the world. We care about how you dress and if you look stylish or not. Does it mean you have to look like a male model? No, it simply means you need to have a good sense of fashion and wear the right outfits when you go out. That's it. All right. What What's the right outfit? That, that's a million dollar question. Is it what is it what's popular? Is it what's expensive? Is it what is it is it something that's trendy? Um, it, hey, I look pretty good in a suit, but if I walk into a nightclub in a suit, I'm not sure how that would. She could have boiled that down a little bit better, but uh, again, I get, I suppose that that depends on where you live and what style is in. So. Uh, I'd suggest going out there and getting like men's GQ magazine, but last I saw they were running articles that were for feminists, so maybe, maybe not. Uh, you may have to find another magazine for your uh, uh, dress style. Question number three, do you indulge in any form of physical exercise? Women like men who are strong and fit enough to protect them. Since the dawn of mankind, women have relied on men for protection and safety, so it's built into our biology. Exercise helps you achieve that level of strength and fitness. But that doesn't mean you need a crazy Greek godlike body. No, you simply need to be strong and fit enough and healthy enough. That's it. That's it. So notice she doesn't say something very important here. Okay. Women often, often, often say they want a tall guy because tall guys and big guys make a woman feel very petite and very secure and very safe. So yeah, you can go to the gym, but if you're a guy like myself, that's five foot seven, I've had a lot of women say, no, I, I like tall guys uh, or the guy's got to be so many inches taller than me. So I feel safe. Here's what's amazing. A guy can go to the gym. A guy can be in really good fa uh, shape. He can know martial arts. He can know self-defense. He might be able in certain areas to uh, conceal and, and carry. Uh, he might be the safest guy in the world, but if he's not tall, uh, that's, that's a knock against him. So sh if she were being honest here, she would have mentioned that. But again, there's nothing you can do about that. So as I've said before, the best thing to do is go hit the gym for yourself. So she's not wrong, but you notice she leaves the she kind of leaves the uncontrollables out of everything she mentions that women find attractive. Shocker. If you are, congrats. If not, 
then maybe it's time to start an exercise routine that you find doable. Question number four, do you have a well-defined purpose in life? This is huge. Men who are purpose-driven have a very intense sex appeal that cannot be put into words. It makes them seem like a true alpha male that women just can't help but gravitate towards. All right, question number five. So question four is, is obviously, do you have a goal and purpose? And, and I've told a lot of you guys this, always chase your dreams, chase your purpose, do what you want to do in life, find that calling and chase after it. So again, she's not wrong here. I, I think she's spot on and I think women do find that attractive. Um, so I'm not not picking her on her on that one. So far though, because I have, I have my goals, so far I'm four for four. I, I hope you guys are doing well. We're gonna find out if we're top one percenters here. Do you have a dependable source of income? Notice how I didn't say millions of dollars in the bank. That's because 95% of women don't care if you're super rich or not. We only want to know if you have a reliable source of income and that you're financially responsible. That's a lie. That's a flat out lie. Women don't care if you're rich or not. They just wanna know you have a re reliable source of income. So you're gonna tell me Tommy, who's the assistant manager, and if your name is Tommy, I'm not picking on you, I apologize. I'm just, you, that was the first name that popped in my head. So Tommy, the assistant manager at Taco Bell, who's had that job for five years and makes $9 an hour, you're gonna tell me, hey, that's a stable job, that's all that matters? I call BS on that one. Because I know, how many articles have I read on this channel where women are not going out with plumbers or electricians or car mechanics because they have a lesser education or they're not as smart as Miss College thing that has gone off and gotten a four-year degree in gender studies, even though she's a barista at Starbucks. She's going to say, well, my education and I'm, I'm smarter, so I've got to find a guy that is more successful than me and makes more money and is smarter. Women only want to date up. And again, I did an, a video on this many months ago where a study, and I don't remember how many people were in the study, but I think it was a, a user group of several thousand people. Women admitted they wanted to date men or marry men that were as 150% as successful or made 150% of the income they made. So if a woman made 100 grand, she wanted the guy to make 150. If a woman made 40 grand, she wanted the guy to at least be able to make 60 to 80. Uh, there are studies on this stuff. So for her to say, hey, all you have to do is, is be stable and have a reliable job, guys, that counts BS. This is the first one that is BS. I marked it off though, because I have a stable job. It's called retirement and investment. And so I, I marked that off. I'm calling it. That's it. That makes you more than attractive enough to us. All right, question number six. Do you have an active social life? I've said this in my old videos many times. Women are automatically drawn to men with active social life. There's nothing more to add to this. Nothing. Question number seven, do you have hobbies and passions that you enjoy? Men with interesting hobbies and passions are always extremely appealing to us, whether that's playing the guitar, or collecting rare coins, writing, dancing, playing a sport, it doesn't matter. As it doesn't matter if you collect rare coins and are passionate about, oh, I gave myself a zero on the social. If I have a, a good group of, so I'm not on social media. I don't go hang out when, with a lot of people. I gave myself a big fat goose egg on the, uh, if I have a big social circle. I don't, I think that is a waste of time. Do women like it when a man is popular amongst uh, many other people? Yes, they do. Now, as far as this goes, she says hobbies. Hobbies are important. So you're going to tell me that you, uh, your boyfriend, um, Mark, who's really passionate about being a CSGO player or uh, being in the top guild in World of Warcraft or something like that. You're going to tell me that, that he's passionate about that and dedicates some time and some hours every night playing his video game. You can tell me that's okay. She used coin collection. You're going to tell me a guy that's sitting there and, and polishing and loving his very rare, unless it's Bitcoin, then I'm sure all the women would be like, yeah, I'd love my guy to, to be into coins like Dogecoin or Dodgecoin, however you want to pronounce it. Um, you know, they're not talking about cryptocurrency. She says it's passionate if a guy's passionate about a coin collection. That's a big fat no on that one. Again, hey, it's one thing to say it. But again, if a guy's really into collecting polished rocks or rare decks of cards or whatever it is, or, or Pokemon or whatever, you're going to tell me that you're going to find that attractive? But no. Long as he is passionate about it, genuinely, it's sexy to us. Question number eight, do you have faith in yourself? The importance of having faith in yourself, or in other words, self-confidence, is massive. This is one of the most attractive qualities a man can possibly have. And I've said this thousands of times before, and I'll say it thousands of times again. Self-confidence is as attractive to us women as a big pair of breasts or a slim, well-figured, maintained body is to you. Question number nine. I do agree on that. Self-confidence is one of the biggest uh, attractors you can have. 
when it comes to meeting women. The, the big thing is, though, or, or being attractive to women, the big thing is, though, you need to be able to convey that confidence without being a jerk. So I think she's right on this one. Um, so I'm giving myself that one. I'm pretty confident. I'm just saying. Are you honest? Without honesty, we can't trust a man. If we can't trust him, we can't be with him, period. So honesty is one of the biggest and most important traits we look for in a man. And there's not a single woman I've ever met who will say otherwise. Question number 10, do you have clear cut personal boundaries? This means, do you have a clear sense of what's acceptable and unacceptable in life? It is so important to have clear personal boundaries and to fiercely impose them when necessary. Nice guys tend to lack this. And it's one of the biggest reasons they struggle with women. If a man doesn't have personal boundaries, we instantly lose respect for him. It just happens. And if we don't have respect for him, we can't possibly find him attractive or sexy. Question 11. I agree with her on that one too. Um, you know, it's it's going to be those one of those situations where a guy, if he if he comes across as a simp, if he comes across as whatever you want, honey, and whatever you say, dear, that women will not find that attractive. But remember, a lot of the women that are out there today say, "I am a strong, powerful, um, dominant, sarcastic." They're very alpha women. And if you are this confident guy, you're not they're not going to like dating you and you're not going to like dating them. So by default, these strong empowered women have to date weak men, weak men that are not able to stand up for themselves, that don't draw clear lines and don't have these boundaries. A lot of women that that run into a guy that has these boundaries, they will call them jerks, they'll call them uh many other worse names that I can't say. Uh, but the truth of it is when a guy won't put up with a woman's crap, she's going to be one of two ways. She will respect him and find and find the attraction in that, or she will not like it at all and will call him names and want to be a part. It is better to have a woman completely dislike you because of your boundaries than for you to let or be into you for your boundaries. One of the two. It's either like on or off, an on off switch. It's better to have a woman dislike you completely or hate you completely or like you and appreciate it versus you giving in and she's kind of like, eh, eh, like he's nice. I mean, and yeah, you don't want to be the nice guy. So make sure that you stand up for yourself and set your guidelines. If you don't know what those are, you will once you have confidence and you've done more things in your life to know what you do and don't want. I do not eat seafood. I just don't. I don't like it. I never have since I was a kid. I'll eat shrimp, like like maybe some some grilled shrimp with soy sauce or something in in some in some Asian food. But I also eat sushi. So it's like two ends. I eat a little bit of 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 shrimp and I eat raw fish because raw fish doesn't taste fishy. Other than that, I don't eat it. If if a woman's like, please, please, can we go to a seafood place? And I look on a menu and there's nothing but seafood. You can go alone. Like that's just a, but when you draw those lines, what you're doing is drawing your personality so they can actually know who you are. And then they either accept you on who you are or they don't accept you uh, accept you for who you are. Um, but it's better that than a woman just thinking you give in and, and are weak. So again, she's right on this one. I have, I have no complaints on that. I also gave my point, myself a point on that. How are we doing, guys? Uh, how, how are you scoring? Well, the people who know you say you're a responsible person. Like I've mentioned before in other videos, in the male-female dynamic, women want men to be leaders. That's what this whole alpha male stereotype boils down to. Leadership. And a leader must be responsible. We must be able to rely on him without worrying. We want our man to be able to take charge of things and get done. It's extremely attractive to us on a very deep biological level. Question number two. Now, what she doesn't mention is, she. hey, men need to be able to get it done. Men need to... to ugh, I don't know why I'm having so much problem talking tonight. Must be because it's late. Men need to be able to get it done. Men need to be able to handle it. Men need to be able to just make sure everything's good. Okay, yeah. That's, again, part of men taking control of things. But when women don't allow that, then men are not being taught this. Remember also that being a strong, intelligent, um, uh, depend or dependable man, now we're also told that that's kind of toxic masculinity. You know, stoicism and not being in touch with your emotions is is very, uh, very toxic for men. And so again, there are gonna be less and less men that show these qualities. Now you guys definitely should show this quality, but again, she she's really she speaks to the opposite of what a lot of the girl power advocates do. So I think she's she's right on in this. But the other thing she fails to mention here again is the income is a big part of being able to take care of things. And so many times women say, "Oh, again, not all women, but many modern women are like, oh, I, I'm fine with him being a stay-at-home dad. I make the money, and I'll be the strong one, and I'll be the the alpha woman." 
how is he going to be able to take care of things when things hit the fan if he's not bringing in any money? If he doesn't have any resources of his own and you're the supplier of resources. See, she skips over that, that a lot of women, a lot of women, they require him to make more money and be more successful than they are. Again, she kind of glosses that over very quickly here. For 12, you have a good sense of humor. This should not be a surprise to anyone, right? Guys who are fun, playful, and don't take things too seriously, always without exception, have amazing results with women. All women love a guy with a good sense of humor. Every single one. It's one of the most seductive traits a guy can have. Now, please note, a good sense of humor doesn't mean you gotta be funny like an experienced comedian. It simply means that you goof around, make silly jokes, self-amuse, and don't take things too seriously. That's it. Question? I agree with her. It's a sign of confidence, so I think that's accurate. If you're confident and comfortable enough to crack a joke at things, then it means that you're, you're comfortable in your own skin. So I agree with her on that one. 13, can you keep calm under pressure? This is huge. Another hallmark trait of a true alpha man, a true leader. Can you keep calm under pressure? This is so important for us women. In fact, this is why women test guys in the first place. Many guys think that we only do it to play games and make things unnecessarily hard for you. But the truth is, we only do it to check if you can handle pressure. Because if you can, you're a true alpha male, which is the type of man all women want. Question number 14. What, she, what she was explaining right there is crap tests. Crap testing you and giving you S tests, which all women do. In any length of time, in almost any relationship, women will constantly test you. And if you fail this too many times, they will not be attracted to you anymore. Um, it's one of the things that you got to put up with in a relationship. Now, the better and more often that you handle this and the harder you squash it, usually the less it will come up, the less it will pop up again, and the less often you have to do it. But if, if you fail a few of these tests, it, it, it's a it's a way that women will lose confidence in you. So you don't, you definitely have to know how to handle them. There are many pickup guides and guy coaches out there that will tell you how to handle, handle an S test. Most of the time, if you do it with, with humor or you brush them off or you ignore them or you laugh at them and just say, where do you come up with this crazy stuff? And then just move on. That what they want is a non-emotional or a lighthearted response. Um, but she is right. They're, they're going to push you on this just to test you. Willing to make mistakes and endure failure in life. Why is this important to us? It's simple. If a man is willing to make mistakes and endure failure, it means he'll take risks. It means he'll go for the things he wants in life without fear and doubt holding him back. And it means he'll be one of those few people who actually live on their own terms. And all that makes him insanely and irresistibly sexy to us. I think this is another valid point. But the thing is you have to make mistakes. You have to have an enriched life. You have to have a busy life. You have to have um, a lot of knowledge. And the way you acquire this knowledge to get this kind of confidence and or this kind of um well knowledge is just to live a life well lived and that's why i say many times don't live or chase or do things for women do them for yourselves and then the the smarts and the knowledge and the comfort in your own skin will come within time that's why guys when you're younger don't worry about women worry about your life your path your goals bettering yourself doing tough things having tough days working through those strifes so then as you get a little bit older you've got the the confidence and the knowledge how to get through a lot of these problems um and and that way you are a problem solver his willingness to make mistakes and endure failure is an extremely rare and valuable trait if you have it congrats if you don't strive for it not only will it help you out with women it'll help you succeed in every area of your life plus if you're willing to take more risks you're more likely to approach women in the first place which automatically increases your odds of success right question number 15 do you feel like you're entitled to good things in your life this is a really deep question so think about it clearly you can pause this too if you want to think about it do you have a sense of entitlement do you strongly and genuinely believe that you deserve good things in life because the truth is the vast majority of men don't feel this way ridiculous social conditioning and misinterpreted past experiences force them to doubt their worthiness and because of this they not only hurt their chances with women but they hurt their chances of success in life I think she's spot on with this one. Um, I, I think she's exactly right. We talk about this a lot. The way that society treats men right now, it's very easy for men to get unhappy, to feel that the world is against them, uh, that that many of the things that they're doing are wrong or unfair. And you can get bitter and you can get angry about this, or you can spin it around and say, hey, the world is against me. People try to hold me back or hold me down. And I'm going to succeed despite that. And I'm going to do what's best for me. And, you know, to hell with everybody that's going to try to hold me back. In the, the same vein, most women today, or many, many women today, are very entitled. They're too entitled. They think that they're owed something. They think that, that they're, you know, God's gift to humanity just for being on the planet. And they think all they need to do to bring, or, or all they need to bring into a relationship is themselves. 
And the problem is that's not enough. And so, you know, even if she's giving all these these tips and these hints, and I think they're good, I, I think a lot of these are good advice, even though she's skipping over some of the big ones. The problem that she's suffering with right now is she's she doesn't bring up, is it worth it? And that's always been my argument, whether it's female dating coaches or male dating coaches. Look at all the things that you need to do to be found attractive by a woman or very attractive by a woman. Go to the gym, look good, have a successful job, make sure that you're intelligent, be able to handle problems, uh, blah, blah, blah. Like you have to do all these things for what? For the entitled crazy women, the the, the narcissists and the uh, here I am, you better praise me for the princess I am type women. And that's where so many men today are going, you know, when I weigh all, all this work for uh, what little I get in most relationships today, I'm, I'm not really interested. And, and I get that dating coaches are going to do their thing and help men kind of get into this. But y- you notice that nothing she's telling you right now all these things that women find incredibly attractive. Now, maybe in other videos, she explains how to get this. But the truth is, a lot of this you can handle for yourself or you can get for yourself. And and the way you get a lot of this for yourself is just living a life well-lived for you and and hitting the gym and being confident and, and being socially well-climatized when you talk to other people. That's gonna take care of most of your problems. You don't need a dating coach for that. You just need to live life and put yourself out there a little bit. And, that, and that's why I'm, I'm kind of like, eh, when it comes to taking all these special courses so you can try to learn stuff. I just, I think if you just uh, uh, live a life well lived and put yourself out there, you'll learn it as you go anyway. And they feel they don't deserve what they want and disqualify themselves before even trying. Or even if they try to get it, they don't fully commit to it and it leads to failure. So on the contrary, the men who do have that sense of entitlement go after whatever they want and expect to get it. They feel that they deserve what they want. They deserve the good things in life. And they exude a type of confidence, positivity, and charisma that no woman can resist. Question number 16. I See, I disagree with that. Oh, go go for what you want because you deserve it. And keep going and acting like you deserve it. And, and be all positive and you'll get it. No, that's the problem with society today. That's why everybody is a flaming narcissist and everybody thinks that they're special and they're unique and they should get and I'm owed and, and, and things need to be my way or the highway. That's not how the world works. The truth is I could go out and get the mail tomorrow. The mail truck could come blazing along and she's on her phone or he's on his phone and plow me over, run me over at 30 miles an hour and I'm gone. And I'm sure, oh, press F for Joker, he's gone. Anyway, so what's Coach Greg Adams or what's one of these other channels up to? Too bad, good guy, gone too soon. And the world moves on. I think that's the right attitude to have in life is just understand that you're not special. You're not unique. The world will continue to spin even if you're not in it. People will forget you in very short order. It's kind of a bummer. But that's really the way it is. And if you walk around, you know, thinking the world owes you and you go, these are the, those are the same women that if you're too, you're too, a little too aggressive and you're, hey, I really want her. So I'm going to ask her out two or three times or I'm going to prove myself to her. That's the same woman that's going to be calling HR department and complaining about you. And all of a sudden you're out of a job. Or she's the same one that calls the university and says, hey, he's being all up in my grill and you're kicked out of university. Or if they're a little bit, cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs in the head, they're the same ones that decide, hey, you know what? Uh, I'm going to make a phone call and, and maybe make some charges against this guy to make sure he goes away. Now, again, I'm not saying that a lot of women will do that, but you just can't be all aggressive and act like you're entitled to this and, and go get it anymore. You can't. This is 2021. And for the many, many years, that's the kind of toxic masculinity that women complain about that oh he's too aggressive he won't let leave me alone and he didn't take no for an answer i'm sorry but those days are past and if you think that you can act entitled and really aggressively go after a woman or someone you want to date you're done you're going to get yourself in a lot of trouble that way now going after the job going after a physique in the gym that you want going uh, after your finances or careers things like that or meeting new friends whatever go for it but when it comes to dating, you best not be all aggressive like that, or you're going to find yourself in a world of hurt very quickly. Are you animated with your expressions? This is at the heart of being charismatic. Charismatic men are often the most expressive ones. They're not some reserved, brooding, soft-spoken type of person, you know, like a wannabe James Bond. They express themselves fully and freely. They're animated, not blank and boring. This. Hey, guys. Yay. No. <laughs> now I know that's not what she's talking about. Um, 
there's nothing wrong with being brooding and quiet and you know um a buddy of mine used to pick up women in the bar and he never said a word he just sat in the back corner and whenever a woman caught his eye he'd just lick his eyebrow with his tongue he had a tongue that was like that long <laughs> but here's the thing um yes if if you're interesting and you can tell a good tale and you can tell a story uh, yes, you are going to keep people's um, attraction much longer or keep their attention, and people will find that attractive. But look, if you're just a, a tall, decent-looking dude who's gone to the gym and has a little bit of style to him, you can kind of be the broody, strong type. Some women go for that. If you're really attractive and you've got a really athletic shape, um, you can stand there and just literally have resting dude face, resting bee face, and women are still going to flirt with you. So, uh, take this with a grain of salt. I wouldn't be too animated about it I, and go too crazy with it. I'd say if you're able to uh, express yourself well and do so in a mature and uh, responsible is not the right way, but mature and interesting way, that's going to be a lot better than being all animated and yeah. This means they use their facial expressions, their body language, their voice tonality to their highest capacities to express what they want to express. I'm, I'm trying to show you what this would be like. Uh, I'm not having like a stroke or anything, don't worry. All this allows them to grab your attention and keep us hooked on them. And with time, it makes us more and more attract attracted to them. You don't have to. She literally says like, oh, I'm just trying to show you what that would be like. I'm not having a stroke. That means that you're you're going over the top if you have to tell your own audience, hey, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm showing you what it's like, but I'm, I'm not going crazy. Oh, then, then how are guys going to do that without going crazy? I mean, you're going to tell me that a guy's sitting there going, yeah, man, throwing his eyebrows all over the place and smirking. His, no, just that's all crap. Just be yourself. And if you're a not extremely expressive person, then don't go over the top. I don't know if she's trying to like explain peacocking. If you do this with clothes or your personality or what, just eh. Have to be as animated as I'm showing. I was just showing like an extreme example of it, but you get what I mean. Question 17: Do you laugh or smile often? It's a scientifically proven fact that smiling and laughing makes you seem more attractive and endearing and sexy. Lots of guys hold back from doing this because they feel they need to be more reserved, like non-expressive James Bond type of men. But like I mentioned before, that doesn't do you any good. Laughing and smiling are two of the most endearing things you can do as a man. Plus, since emotions are contagious, we start to feel amazing when you laugh or smile around us. And what girl doesn't want to be with a guy who makes her feel? Wonderful question. I agree with this, but again, it's got to be appropriate. Like you can't be the funny guy and laughing at your own crap all night. And yes, if you say something that's funny and she laughs, you can kind of laugh along with, but you're going to look like a maniac if you're just telling your own jokes and laughing. If she says something funny, yeah, again, laugh and be, but you, you go over the top with this and people are going to think you're bipolar or something. Um, look, most of the times that I've had women show interest or you can be funny you can but my delivery is very dry i'm i'm kind of a very sarcastic dry person i'm not all uh, you know out of the and i'm telling you you can be dry and witty and sly and funny and sardonic and have plenty uh, i just don't think you have to be this bubbly like happy go lucky guy um maybe if it's i don't, I don't know i don't know who she's talking about but uh, you know, again, there's a reason bad boys don't run around telling jokes and laughing and meh, making noises and stuff. Bad boys are usually guys that hit the gym. They're they're a little bit moody. Uh, you know, they may be funny, but the the most you're going to get out of them is maybe them smirking instead of, you know, they might smile with a, a smirk or something, but they're not going to be belly laughing and throwing themselves all over the place. I just don't think that's accurate. Women say that, but I, I know of a lot of guy comedians that are not pulling in a lot of tail. Most of the time, it's the good-looking, tall, athletic, broody guys that are getting the women, the, the exceptionally beautiful women. Uh, maybe it's just me. Number 18. Do you use physical touch when you interact with people? Touch releases a chemical called oxytocin in our brain. This chemical instantly creates positive, feel-good sensations of trust, emotional bonding, and comfort while decreasing fear and anxiety. In simple words, it creates a connection between people almost instantly. Now, I've seen that a lot of men don't initiate touch when they interact with women, and that's because they're afraid of being creepy or assaulting the woman. I get that. But like I said, touch is such a key component to building connection. Men who can do it safely in an interaction have women like them almost instantly. Plus, breaking the touch barrier quickly and getting a woman used to your touch also makes sexual escalation so much easier and so much smoother. Question number Yeah, okay, great. Now, how do they do that without being told they're creepy? Now, notice she doesn't mention that. She's like, oh, they're afraid they're going to be called creepy. Uh, yeah, yeah, they are. And what if, what if a guy does like cross that boundary, try to initiate that, and she doesn't have the interest? She's going to be creeped out. Again, phone call to HR. 
or she may talk to a bouncer and tell him to get this guy out of here. He just touched me. The safest, now she is right that if you can initiate this, um, and if you guys saw me on the Fresh and Fit podcast, the easiest way I'll do it is when I'm talking to somebody, I'll pretend like I'm getting there, like uh, just touching them to get their attention. Like I'll, I'll just reach out with, with a fingertip. So if, if it was like, if this was her shoulder, I, I might be, yeah, and another, and I'll just reach out and just literally touch them with a couple of fingers like boop. And then I'll go, oh, and you know, another thing is, and I immediately take it off. And then I point to them like, you know, another thing is funny. And I just pretend like that's, because it is kind of actually the way I talk. I, I don't poke people like that. The other thing you can do is you guys say something that's funny, you can high five. I mean, it, no, it's not really ro romantic or hotter, but it's very safe. So you can high five with somebody or fist bump them or something like that and have a laugh about it. Treat them like you would a guy friend or a buddy. That's a good way to break down the barrier, but you can't be going around like trying to initiate that you've got to, you got to have a really good set of social skills to know when it's appropriate to cross this boundary. Or again, you're going to get yourself in hot water. See, the thing they, the dating coaches never tell you is like, this is, there's a lot to this. There's a lot to this. And you do really have to get committed and you do have to literally study and, and if you're not a natural and figure out how to do this stuff. And yeah, maybe you do end up buying courses from coaches. But at the end of the day, what's it all worth? You get a woman that's 60% likely to divorce, file divorce against you, 50% to cheat on you, 85% to take the kids in a custody battle. I mean, if you're casually dating, great. But again, sometimes it's just easy. It's the quickest way. If all the time that you put in money and you put into these dating coaches, you could just go out and, and hire a professional for a little while. Go get a massage down at the Happy Ending Saloon or something. Number 19, can you maintain and make eye contact as you speak? It's easy to make eye contact when you're listening, but can you maintain it while speaking? Eye contact clearly shows how confident or how insecure you are. Plus eye contact also makes people pay attention to you and creates intense feelings of trust and connection. And not only that, there are also experiments done which show that two people can actually experience love and admiration for each other simply by gazing into each other's eyes for a certain period of time, which is fascinating, right? What's more, eye contact is also the easiest way to spark sexual tension, which makes women eager to take things to the next level with you. Again, it's true, it's true, but you've got to, you, you've got to get a lot. There, there's a definitive path. She's making it sound like if you do this with any woman, she, no, that you've, there's so many steps in between this stuff. And again, if you just buy her course for five ninety nine, or, you know, I don't know how much your course is, but take her course and she'll teach you all this stuff. Or you know what? You could just be a, a masculine, intelligent man and do your own thing and, and just be happy. And then if you happen to bump into somebody and you have a good conversation with them, great. But but that this is an awful lot of work, and, and it's almost like a, a, a part-time job to go through all these steps. And again, I just don't think it's worth it. I just don't think it's worth it. Now, over time, can you learn this stuff? Yes, but the majority, I was kind of an awkward guy when I was younger. I was very awkward in school. And then as I became a DJ and I got into sales and did some other things, I, I got so comfortable I can talk to anyone about anything. That's what really amped my game up. Um, as far as dating is just being comfortable in my own skin and being able to talk to anyone about anything. And then as you develop your personality further and you develop your own kind of zone of who you are as a person, then it gets a lot easier. Dating now in my 40s is a lot easier th than it was in my teens or 20s. And eh, 30s was about the same. By then I had kind of figured myself out. But it just if you just live your course and and you know dress well and take care of yourself and hygiene wise and go to the gym and and not be weird or awkward when you talk to people most of the most of this stuff goes out of the way if if you have the looks for the type of woman that you're interacting i go talk it doesn't matter if i've got all the tips i'm so far i'm at 18 out of 19 the, I, my personal opinion you may disagree but i know me pretty well uh, the only one i don't have is a big social circle so already you're going to tell me that i'm in the top, what top one percent of sexy most attractive men out there come on let's be realistic about this okay we, we all know I'm not that guy. And, and you guys aren't either for the vast majority of you. And there's nothing wrong with that. But again, to kind of act like, well, all you need is these tips and you're going to be one of the most attractive men out there. Sorry, not going to happen because in, in these dating apps and in ways that you interact with these entitled women, they don't give you the opportunity to show any of these awesome characteristics. They do the Oh, yeah, no, you're unattractive, or no, you're not my type, or no, you're short, or no, you're bald, or no, this, no, that, no, that, and because I'm a princess, and then they just move on. All these things that she's talking about are wonderful, but you've got to get the opportunity to try to 
express this with somebody. And let's face it, it's not nearly that easy anymore, especially on dating apps where I don't know what percentage of people are meeting each other now on these dating apps. It's literally a nope, 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 nope. You get half a second to a second to make your impression. How do you do that with one, maybe two photographs? That's why I think this stuff is being disingenuous. It, again, it's just better to live your own life and not pour too much energy into this. I just think it's a waste. Question 20, are you a good listener? Women crave this so much. We desperately want a man who can make us feel heard and understood. It's one of our deepest emotional cravings, which means a man who can patiently listen is no doubt very appealing to us. He makes us feel heard and valued by doing this simple act of listening. And that makes us like him almost immediately. Question 21. And wait till you're married. Wait till you're dating somebody seriously. Oh my God, the phone calls. Oh, the the hours of, oh, but you'll never believe what happened with Becky today at work. Blah, blah, blah. Talk, uh, you know, garden salad stolen. Blah, blah, blah. Boss yelled at me about blah, blah. Customer did this. Blah, 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 blah. Things that you, things that you do not care about. Not, again, it's not always going to happen, but there's a whole lot of talking from women, let me tell you. A buddy of mine lives in California. We might not talk for half a decade, like four or five years. And he'll message me out of the blue or I message him out of the blue. Hey, man, how's it going? Good. Hey, you got a minute for a call? Yep. Pick up the phone. Hey, man, what's new? Nothing. Job's good. Kids good. Family's good. This is good. What's going on with you? Boss is almost done. Going to be traveling. YouTube's going great. Blah, blah. Hey, man, that's awesome. Great. Blah. 20 minutes. We're done. We're good for another five years. <laughs> There's no woman alive that can tell you a 20 minute or 30 minute story and be good, not for five years, but for five hours. You have to be the entertainment director. You have to listen. You have to empathize. You have to care. Sometimes you need to problem solve, but other times you just need to listen and understand. And you don't, you shouldn't help solve the problem. Oh, now, which one is which? Don't, I don't know, because she's not going to tell you. You're supposed to, get, again, just hoop after hoop after hoop after hoop. For what? For what? One, do you have expansive body language? This is super crucial. Do you have expansive body language? Do you sit and stand with your back straight and shoulders pulled back? Do you take up space as you move? Do you hold your head up high? Heck, how's your body language right now as you watch this video? You see, these little things matter so much. When you have expansive body language, you look dominant and confident, both of which makes girls find you very sexy. In fact, body language matters even more than clothing when it comes to looking great. By simply changing your body language, you can elevate your sex appeal instantly. Question 22, can you start? You hear that? So if you look like George Costanza, from, from uh, I almost said friends, from Seinfeld. You know, if, if you look like some uh, frumpy guy that's bald and, and has carrot top hair coming out of the, uh, your head and you're four foot five, but if you throw your shoulders back and walk with an air of confidence. Again, now again, I'm not crapping on all her points. Yes, these points are great, but... But it's, she's still, you notice she still hasn't touched on like, hey, guys, we really like guys that make good money, more money than us. Hey, we do like tall guys. We like handsome guys. We like guys with full heads of hair. We like all these different things. Now, can you make up for that? Yes. Can you maybe get into the top 20 or 30% of men? Yes. But she's not touching on really any of the reality of it. She makes it sound like if you do all these steps, you're going you're gonna to come across and find yourself a great woman. You might find yourself a woman. Is she worth all the effort of this, though? That's my contention, that she is not. Start and lead an interaction. A woman hardly ever takes charge of an interaction. We expect that a man would be able to carry a conversation from start to finish. Why? Because, like I mentioned before, we want our men to be a leader in every possible way. And if he can be that leader and lead us through an interaction from open to close, it stimulates us emotionally and can't, we can't help but feel attraction towards him. Okay, time for the last question, and this one is so, so crucial. Question 23. Can you flirt properly? Flirting is what sparks a sexual chemistry between a man and a woman. A woman can find you cool and attractive, but if she feels there's no chemistry between you, no matter how attractive you are or attractive she is, she most probably won't consider having an intimate relationship with you. Oh, but remember, guys, if you flirt and she doesn't find you attractive, you're harassing her. Only when she finds you attractive and you flirt, is that okay? Now, again, which is which? Who knows? Who knows? You certainly don't know. So you might either get a phone number or you might get an, an HR rep. I never, I always recommend never, ever, ever date anybody at work. I just like HR because that's who everybody complains to. Um, but the bouncer gets a phone call the or, or gets called over the, the coffee guy or she puts on social media a photo of you or your name or something and says you're a creepy dude. Uh, you know, they, they say that they love it, but the problem is when they don't love it, they complain. 
And, and she makes all these assumptions that guys are supposed to know when and how and if this is okay and how's it going. And a lot of guys don't. A lot of guys don't get those signals. And women have admitted that they use these signals to get things from men, even if they're not interested in dating them. Oh, yeah, you know, I, I flirt with him a little bit or I'm nice or I pretend like I like him a little bit. He takes me out to dinner once once a week or I get lunches with him or he's someone I can cool, I can hang out with and talk to, but I have no interest in him romantically. But they give off those signals. There's another article that I did on this a little while ago. So, again, you never know. And how are you supposed to know? You're not. In other words, she'd be very hesitant to give you her number, go on a date, or get physical with you. This is what makes flirting so important. It's the number one thing which sparks sexual chemistry. So if you're one of those very few men who can flirt properly with women, pat yourself in the back. You've no idea what a gigantic advantage that is. On the other hand, if you can't flirt with women like 99% of men out there, you must do something about it fast. And a great she says 99% of men don't know how to flirt. Okay, so only 1% of men know how to flirt. Okay, good luck with that. Good luck with it. Now, I admit a lot of guys are maybe nervous or shy about it, but there are, I know a lot of guys that are perfectly fine with flirting and telling jokes and being funny and interesting. Do you know what, though? They don't. Why do they not? They just leave things flat because they don't know if they're going to get in trouble or not. They don't know if, if they're going to have a complaint filed against them or not. So they just say, you know what? I, I don't. Women have scared me to the point where I'm not even going to try anymore. And that's where a lot of men, I think it was something like 30 or 30, uh, I did this in another video, 30 or 35% of men in college felt that it, it might be harassing if they asked a girl for their phone number or asked them out on a date. Just that alone, they said, I think I can get in trouble. A third of college age guys. Now, as those guys get older, as those guys hear more stories, as those guys get turned down more, pretty soon it'll be at 50%. This is the world you, you ladies have created where men, a lot of men are just like, I don't even know what to do anymore. I don't know what's okay. Is this okay if I do this? What's the point? Now, there are guys out that are out there going, oh, you're just shy or you're awkward or whatever. I go out and get it constantly, man. Okay, good for you. Go for it. Go for it. That's a lot of energy. And maybe you find that it's worth it. A lot of guys don't. And in the same token, again, this is a, like, if you don't know this stuff, this is, this can be mountains of work. I mean, looking back at everything I've learned over the years, just talking with people and various books I've read, it is a lot of work. And in the end result, only you can determine if it's worth it or not for you. But if you ask me now, looking back, I would probably say not. Great first step would be to check out my F formula. The F formula is- All right, and this is where she goes into her pitch for, hey, check out my F formula, and this is how to meet men, and et cetera, et cetera. But anyway, uh, when she gets to her, her percentages, um, I think she, it was uh, over 16 to 20 is you're very attractive to women, and 20 and over, uh, you're in the top 1% of attractive men to women. Um, according to this, and I, I was being pretty fair. I'm pretty comfortable in my own skin. Uh, the only thing I ding myself for is uh, being social, socially awkward. But even if you took away uh, the ability to flirt and one or two more points, I'm still above 20. So you're going to tell me I'm the top 1% of attractive men in the United States? <clears throat> Give me a break. My my uh, bald five foot six, five foot seven, whatever I am, um, <laughs> frame <laughs> is... No, no. There are plenty, plenty more men that are the tall, good-looking, athletic, handsome players out there that have this game down very tight, very tight. And those are the ones that the women are, you know, uh, swiping. Oh, okay. He, uh, yeah, he put someone in an early grave and uh, he likes to, to, I don't know, do harmful things to harmful people, but he's got a six pack. He's super tall and super hot. So I swiped on him. And then he said, hey, do you just want to come over and F? And they're like, yeah, time, place. Those guys, those guys, I, I mean, th there was the Tinder experiment of that that I did in a video. W women were just falling all over themselves to go out with a really horrible person. Why? Because he was tall and he was a bad boy and he was attractive and he had tattoos. So, yes, it, here's the thing. If you actually are interacting with a woman on a regular basis and she hasn't friend zoned you, and you go through these steps, yes, there is a chance that you may have the opportunity to date her. It's it's a slim chance, but in the same token, this is also, I'm, this is a video I'm planning to do for tomorrow night because I'm running late tonight. This is why tomorrow night I'm putting out a video that tells you why women that have lots of guy friends, she's you should not date them. Or if you do, it's super casual and just assume She's either going to leave you for one of these other guys or she's already sleeping with one of these other guys. 
Because see, the the people that hang, and I have some studies on it too, people that hang around each other, if that guy can do these things that she's talking about, yes, it may wear eventually wear away on the girlfriend where if you and her have a fight one night or she's mad at you or she has a couple of sips too many, he may he may be able to get her interested enough to to cheat on you or do something else. That's why you never have you never date a woman that has a lot of guy friends. Um, or if she does have these guy friends, she better be really willing to introduce you to them, and these guys better be awkward and unattractive. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. So um, I'm going to stop it here. Um, we've gone far enough into this. Let's jump over to the dating profile of the day, and then then we'll uh, wrap it up with a summary of thoughts. So now onward to the dating profile of the day. I actually had to kind of say it twice because I didn't get my intro right. And I like saying the day at the end of that. Okay. Uh, This is, I don't have a photo on this one, but she says she's 22. She is a single mom. She says, I'm in, I'm a fat F deal with it. Don't you love that? See guys, if you're heavy or you're have your issues, women just say no, because you're this ew. But if she has that same issue, she'll say, oh, no, I'm still beautiful and bold and big, beautiful, bold, rotund woman. And you just you need to deal with it. It doesn't go the same way the other way around, though. She says you push out two kids and go back to your original body. So at 22, she's a single mom with two kids and and as pretty much just admitted she trashed her body doing it. I've seen women go back to the gym. They can get their bodies back in in shape. Uh, She says, my body is not toned or anything like that. It's just, it's big, it's jiggly like jelly, and I'm as curvy as an effing roundabout. Oh, I'm so turned on right now. Not looking for just an F or a casual thing. To be honest, I just want to meet someone that will give me the kick up the A I need to lose weight. Okay, so she doesn't she doesn't want anything casual. She doesn't want to just F you. She wants to date you, and you need to be her new motivational gym coach. Also, while dating a apparently a whale. That's at least how she describes herself. She says, if you can't handle a big woman with a smart mouth and sarcastic tones, then I am not for you. Congratulations, ma'am. You are not for any reasonable, sensible man. Good luck to you. Um, guys, uh, here's the thing. So, I, you know, I, I uh, Marina here, I think, she does give out good advice. Uh, and and I so I don't want to crap on her. But the problem is that she's also not being 100% authentic. Most people meet on dating apps now. A lot of people meet in the clubs or in pubs, things like that. How do you exhibit all these wonderful skills that she's telling you about in the first 30 seconds, minute, two minutes as you're trying to converse with somebody? Most of the time, if you're not at least a a certain, if you don't have a certain attitude or a certain look about you, you get kicked to the curb before you people even get to see a lot of these qualities. Now, where this may come in handy is if you have a group of, of friends or people that you hang out with in a social group, um, photographers or hobby people that do the same hobbies as you, and you can exhibit these qualities over time. Yes, women will find it attractive. But again, you have to find the time and the place and the right way. And are they gonna, are they gonna be into you? And do you get the time to do this? And at the end of the day, again, I, I think, I, I think things are against you. Now, can it happen? Yes. Can you put yourself, can you do all the things that she, she suggested and have better luck with women? Most definitely. And that's why I give her props because she's not wrong. She is telling you things that women will find attractive. The trick is how much work do you need to put forth to get there? If it's a little bit of work, then maybe you say, hey, you know what? This is something I'm going to do. If it's a lot of work, I'm not saying you shouldn't, but just un- be understand just understand that this is a lot of work. And you do really have to put in a lot of time and energy. And at the end of the day, what is the prize that you're winning? More often than not, it's a purple-haired princess who thinks she's the world and that you are crap and patriarchy and bad and don't want to deal with you. Now, there are women out there that will appreciate it. But remember, for those women, you're competing with 100% of normal, sane, well-adjusted men that are also looking for the smaller and smaller pool of normal, healthy um women that are, have not gone absolutely bonkers and, and swung far left. So, 
you know, you have to make that decision if that's up for you or not. So, guys, uh, guys, uh, if you'd like to support my work, links are below as always. If you have, thank you very much. Best way to support me is like, comment, share, subscribe. Check me out over on locals, uh, betterbachelor.locals.com, and I will leave it there. Uh, this is Better Bachelor. I'm Joker. And remember, it can be done. The two questions you have to ask yourself is, number one, is it worth all this work? And number two, look at the prize you're getting. Is it worth it for that kind of prize versus this kind of work?